Hi, uh, we're Regrid. Uh, my name is Adam Bumpus. I'm the CEO and co-founder. Uh, I'm Simon, CTO of Regrid. I'm Alex. I'm the CMO and co-founder of Regrid. I'm Mike Gamble. I'm a lead engineer. So our origin story at Regrid is that we're kind of united around a common purpose, which is to bring clean energy to everybody. Uh, to avoid climate change and to make uh, access to this clean energy available around the world at any time. So um, at Redgrid, we are creating what's called the Internet of Energy. And so that is a platform that connects devices that both produce and consume energy and gives them the intelligence to both communicate with one another and coordinate their behavior with one another. And when you give these devices that are currently disconnected intelligence, they can uh, act in, in accordance with one another to avoid blackouts, for example, that we experienced here in Australia, but also exchange value with one another. And then by doing that, we can create a grid that is harmonious for both people and the planet. So um, an example of this is that you might have an air conditioner in one place, uh, which is consuming a lot of energy. Uh, and then we have another air conditioner coming on. Suddenly we've got a lot of air conditioners like we have in Australia, these very, very hot days, all dragging energy on the grid. That causes problems. And actually here in Australia, we've had blackouts because of that. So what Red Grid technology does is enables those uh, air conditioners to orchestrate themselves to some to switch on a bit earlier, some to switch off during those peaked events. And we start to get these, turn these big, big waves of energy demand into these smaller, smaller waves. And so we turn, enable the grid to be more sustainable. Uh, and our project, therefore, is enabling us to move to a future that's gonna be resilient to the extremes of climate change and also enable people to use their energy in the best possible way. During the blackout period, we thought, or Simon thought, did some quick calculations and if we could just turn the pool filters off for a little bit, not enough to cause meningitis or disease, but enough to give an ease on the grid, we could have prevented the blackouts. So really interesting uh, use cases coming up. So the problem we're solving here is that there are still 1.2 billion people on earth that don't have electricity, and we're moving to a climate which is unsustainable. We can't burn fossil fuels anymore. So we need lots of clean electricity and we need it to get to everybody. The reason how we can solve this problem is also happening because we have 200 billion Internet of Things devices that are coming onto our systems uh, within the next five to 10 years. And so we have this amazing opportunity to take these problems, use Internet of Things devices and the Internet of Energy and create these solutions. What the system needs is a decentralized architecture and there's been a lot of attention around blockchain solutions as uh, providing a promise to solve that problem. But the unfortunate reality is that blockchain solutions are data centric also, so they suffer from the same problem. The Holochain solution that we've come across is agent centric, so energy devices need local and global context to make their decisions and cooperate as a group and Holo is really the only opportunity uh, to solve that problem. So I, I was on the first two dev camps. Uh, the first one was, of course, Go from Google, and then the Rust one. And after the second one, Philip Beadle, who actually lives in Melbourne, as does David Meister, some of the core devs. Um, I went to him afterwards and I said, basically, can this be headless? Because a lot of the, uh, in the dev camp was to do with web development, but I could see the possibilities. And um, again, with the IoT uh, perspective, and he said, absolutely, um, these things scale. And as we get deeper into it, I believe that they infinitely scale, which is really interesting. Um, so I brought it to these guys in about October, and it's been a whirlwind since then, and we've just lashed right onto it. Uh, so we see Holochain is really important to this um, solution because it's uh, the solution to the energy problem really needs a transformation and uh, it needs a whole entire new way of looking at things and uh, the agent based approach from the bottom up and out and uh, orchestrating energy devices with local and global context is super important and it's it's really a, a unique solution to this industry so that's in particular why we think it's super important. Of course, a very obvious reason why we chose Holochain is there's no energy associated mining costs and like we can't save the planet if we're killing it at the same time. So that's really important to us. 
And the last one I'd add as well is uh, community. The Holochain community has been really brilliant and rallying behind us in our mission and, and they're also very mission driven as well. So uh, there's a great alignment there. I was on the first two dev camps. The first one was Go language, and now it's Rust. And during the first one, which was the very first dev camp, um, there were people changing things at the same time. It's not just in time. It was while we were uh, on the, the camp. It was really impressive to behold. Um, with the second one, of course, it switched to Rust, which is a very um, brutal language. It's unforgiving, but uh, I think it's a really sound choice that Holochain went with that because going into the future, that's what we need, especially in the IoT space where it has to be correct and it's also very lightweight. So in ter technically, I think it's really sound decisions that were made. Yeah, I think from a, from a point of view of partners, like we, we found a partner who actually believes in our goal, believes mm. in what we want to do and that's, that's everything, right? That's the thing that keeps you getting out of bed in the morning and keeps you coming to work and making this happen is that you're working with people who fundamentally believe in your values and, and, and share those values. So we've got two main audiences uh, for our platform. Uh, firstly, leading energy companies who want to see a clean energy future for everybody, uh, smart cities and universities. So these are all the big institutions that we're working with to deliver the internet of energy and the real use cases with IoT enabled energy devices at the edge. Um, but just like the internet, our audience is also everybody. Uh, and ultimately we want to have this in everybody's homes, in every uh, coffee shop, in every uh, supermarket, in every place people go to because we see this as being able to enable the Internet of Energy to save energy for everybody, whatever they're doing, wherever they are. Uh, so we've been able to demonstrate a couple of use cases with this platform already. One in particular is uh, a nice easy one which is the ability to orchestrate uh, air conditioner assets actually and, and according to market conditions and we've actually been able to demonstrate about a 40% saving in real energy usage for, for end user customers uh, based on that platform. The other very interesting use case we've uh, demonstrated as well between a utility group in Germany and Bangladesh was the ability to donate energy value across global borders. So. Uh, a person producing excess energy in Germany was able to donate that energy value to a particular specific person in a village in Bangladesh and their meter would be topped up and uh, uh, immediately they could be, have the power they need. So that, they're two use cases in particular but one of the important things about the Internet of Energy platform we're building is it's an open platform for developers to build applications upon. So as our grids become more meshed and more interconnected and hyper-connected, we're super excited to see what applications other people will be able to build on the Holochain Internet of Energy platform uh, that provide value for, for energy people locally and around the world. And I think that uh, in terms of the platform, you could go in both horizontal and vertical directions. So you could extend what we've done. You could also go upwards and, as Simon said, the type of applications that could be built could be from vendors who are already in the space and adding this component, but also data visualization and more and more uh, artificial intelligence and use of all the data that's coming out of Ultimately, we're going to get to a point where 100% of our energy is 100% clean that it's from the sun and it's from the wind, and then it can get to everybody. Because after you've paid off the money that it costs to put up your solar panels, it's very little cost that comes after that because the sun just keeps shining. And so what we see with our, our project here is that we're going to be bringing that 100% clean energy to everybody because we're enabling them to be part of the same system. By enabling people to have access to electricity, it changes people's lives entirely. It creates amazing opportunities for education, uh, for healthcare, for prosperity, for families that are wanting to do the best for themselves and their children. And we firmly believe that by enabling the Internet of Energy, we can enable everyone in the world to have those opportunities and enable the developers to jump on board and develop their own apps for their own places, for the local communities that they see as important. Not just what we're doing at Redgrid, it's about creating something that everyone can dive into and really build something that's got value wherever they may be. 
A key point that people should remember is that incremental innovation is not going to solve this climate problem. We need radical innovation and the Internet of Energy does that by empowering developers to build the transformative technologies that we need to drive toward a net zero emission future. For those who want to get in touch with us, you can reach us through our website or contact us at info at redgrid.io and also follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. So what do we want? Uh, we want people to come with us on this journey. Uh, two main things. We want developers to jump in with us and help us build the open source internet of energy. Uh, and we want investors to come in and help us make this company really sing and really deliver what we can to the world, which is an amazing ability for devices to transact with each other, to bring clean energy to everyone and to enable us to have a clean, sustainable future.